cosmic man. You're going to say, you know, um, plural of majesty or whatever. How, how do you explain oh, Genesis 1? That's very easy. Very easy the yeah. first thing is uh, verse 27 goes back to the singular. So God created man in His yes. own image. Isaiah 44, 24, God said, I spread uh, abroad the heavens alone. I alone. I spread forth the oh, earth by myself. myself. So we cannot think of two co-creators. The simplest way to understand, I think, this passage is it is a plural of deliberation. God yeah. is expressing that the creation of humanity was not an accident, an afterthought, a last minute idea, but God So who was planned. he speaking to when he says, let he us... He is communing within himself. Just within in English, we, we might say, at, as we're planning this program, but let's you're see. You're a scholar, Doc. You cannot now impose uh, English uh, idiomatic... I'm using an anal analogy. Yeah, but uh, let's see. Let us see. That is how we speak. You right. cannot assume exactly. that because we speak that way. That was how the original Hebrews would have, would have spoken. Well, uh, the Jewish people... That's a fallacious... People, uh, no, no. It's a good analogy because human, being, human nature is the same in every language. Yeah, but human cultures. beings do deliberate with themselves and they use the plural to express their deliberation. That is not confined to the English language. And the Jews to whom, and I'm not talking about modern Jews, I'm talking mm -hmm. about the Old Testament believers, they never thought of a trinity. Obviously, Genesis 1.26 was not a powerful you text You have debated Moray, and Moray in his book on the Trinity um, uh, quotes uh, Jewish sources that they wrestled with that um, passage. They wrestled with that um, uh, passage. They tried to go around that passage because they were seeing the force. The, 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 the Elohim is, 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 is in plural. The Hebrews in plural is not just the, the English translation. Well, the Elohim is a plural form, yes. but you have to understand the plural form signifies intensity or greatness. Yes, and sometimes or it is used in reference to a yes. person. And the so, way yeah. that you know. Uh, that it's not referring to a plurality of persons is it uses the singular verb form. So if you study Hebrew, Elohim is paired up with a singular verb. Uh, it would be like an English saying, I am. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't, uh, if, if you saw this, we am, you know something is wrong. Mm -hmm. So Elohim is not being used in the plural sense. It's being used in the a sense of greatness or majesty. And we can see that because it's matched up with singular verbs. So the reference is a singular God. Mm -hmm. uh, if you try to use that to mean plurality, well, it's the false gods that were spoken of as Elohim with a plural verb. You are not just going to the Trinity, you're going to try to No, no, Elohim is used in Genesis 1, 20, 26. Yeah. Oh, yes. And that is in reference to the true God. Yeah, so don't, don't say no, that's no, just no. the false God. No, what I mean... It is also used in reference to yes, the false, yes, false God. Yes, yes. But it here's the difference. Used. When it's used for the true God, it's a singular verb. When it's used for the false gods, it's a plural verb. No, I don't think yes. you can uh, establish that by the, by the language. Oh, um, yes. I respect your, 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 your training, but... I,